Uh, the reason why we can't came in, Mike, is because of claims from the fam the families here uh, of some of the families that have used these planes, and they seem to think that granddad or dad is in these planes. Apparently, people had kinship with the planes mm -hmm. that worked on the planes, and that's what made me initially want to get get into get into this place because of that. Um, that being said, we came we came in. We had claims from staff. Uh, there, I'll go through some of them. Bangs and move, movements and sh shadows in the outside planes. A lot of light play comes in because of vehicles on the on the roads, especially on the outside. Um, a lot of light play indoors because of people opening and closing doors. We were able to pick up the flashlights, but other than that, we didn't have any detection detectable evidence uh, associated with shadow people or shadows in the planes. Now, there was some reported uh, personal experiences where people, our people, had seen a shadow uh, yes. going across I saw some one of them. Windows. I saw a blackout the light. Now, that could have been a reflection from the door being opened up. Don't know. But we, there's too many ifs in there. Too many variables. Yeah. Some staff were uneasy in the hangar. They felt like they're being watched. Uh, some guests uh, are looking down at a cockpit from uh, one plane and seeing somebody looking down at the prop at times, out of the corner of their eye. Windows can do funny things with shadows and things. You have mannequins in, in there that are really, you know, can really draw draw you off. I think that maybe people just look up and see something out of the corner eye and think they see something and they really don't. Um, we also uh, have uh, Walking and bang, banging, a lot of banging and walking in that C-27 turf and sports special that you have out, out, out there that was used during the D-Day. My opinion is the way these planes Everybody are constructed and everything is built to the structure, any kind of weight in the plane gets transferred to the next adjacent member, so you're always going to have a creep. Bang it. So, right. so I can't put any, um, you know, evidence, so to speak, or say that that's a paranormal activity because it's your weight is being transferred to the structure of the plane. We did um, we did get some K2 hits in the cockpits of the outside planes, which I was very, I um, mean, it was very red, very cool. Um, they were banging red, and I got excited, but they wouldn't get red inside the plane, just in the cockpit of this one plane. Well, our investigators came out, and they debunked the whole thing. The radar tower comes in and thumps every so often. I was so it's been thumping, possible. thumping, thumping. In the metal frame, it didn't thump, <clears throat> but in the cockpit, the glass didn't stop it. Okay. So that so we debunked that we debunked that one. We did think we had an uh, electronic voice phenom phenomena, which we call an EVP, on uh, that seat twenty nine. I kind of got get excited about it. The lady was playing in the mood, and we had humming along with, with it, a man's voice. It was methodical. I was like, mm, it kind of had la layers to it. But what happened was, we found out that being the rivets and all the planes and everything, uh, playing the sound of that vi vibrates things. Okay. And it vibrated that hum. Oh, okay. Okay. So the, these are things that we did not hear at the time, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but we heard them when we played it back. Got okay. it? Yep. She should go in auto play. To make it happen, but we would really like you to do that for us. make it happen, but we would really like you to do that for us. Okay, after the guy was talking on the last one, I'd really What'd like you, you to do that for us. I could hear very softly other stuff. Yes. Okay. Now, what you're telling me is that is not another researcher. That talking. is correct. Oh, okay. Well, so that's what, interesting. What, what, yeah. To hear you say something, to, to touch me, 
I'd be wonderfully honored for that. There's two EVPs that came through, both times when Mike was doing his doing mm -hmm. the talking. Mm -hmm. Both times the responses, both sounded like a responsive no, mm -hmm. but they had the same tone, mm -hmm. the same elevated speech, or the same loudness of speech, I should say. Um, it was interesting. And again, it was if it wasn't in response to a direct question, then we might have said, okay, it's another investigator in the area. Yeah. But there was no investigators in the area at the time. Anyway, we have a certificate here of inconclusive, which means we didn't deem it haunted right now, but we deem no, it. We didn't also say you're not. You didn't it's explain we, everything you found. Right? Yes, and and we, we find it very interesting. We want to come back, for sure. We definitely want to come back. With a, with a focus on just on that point. plane. Mm -hmm. How you doing, everybody? My name's John O'Neill from Delaware Ghost Hunters. I'm the president. We're wrapping up another wonderful investigation here at Air Mobility Command Museum. It was a fantastic event. This is a place we highly recommend you come to visit. There's all sorts of air airplanes here from different uh, war eras, uh, World War II, Vietnam, Korea. We highly recommend that you come. During our this investigation here, what we discovered was some EVPs that came about with the plane directly behind me from the C-47 here. We had some very interesting responses to some very direct questions. Uh, so as we begin to wrap up our investigation here at the museum, once again, you're welcome to come out and participate and experience it for yourself. Uh, our next public event coming forward is going to be in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It'll be the Tilly Pierce House. Uh, we'll also be doing the Nesbitt House and Jenny Wade's birth home. So uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.